Fantastic. We'll, we'll start here. So thank you everyone for joining us on our second Fungin Art Talk entitled What, what are we what, what have we <laughs> extending, extending networks, networks. Lessons expanding networks me. fantastic entitled expanding networks um i'm really excited you can possibly tell i've just forgotten what it's called um we have a fantastic array of speakers today i just want to highlight that this has been organized by the wonderful mariana holman who was a facilitator yesterday wonderful artist and is actually going to be talking about her work running with mycelium 2020 today which is joined by Abby Palmer, a fantastic poet and performance artist who will be talking about, I believe, slime moulds and exploring the Fungarium, and Alex and Chloe, the fantastic organisers of Fungi Fest 2019. And we have Berta, who has stepped in fantastically last minute uh, to talk about the exhibition, the famous exhibition that happened in London this year at, and it's escaped me again, Somerset House. At Somerset, Somerset House. There we are. I, <laughs> imagine this is organised. This is no. This is very organised, and it's just me letting the team down. And it's going to be facilitated by the wonderful Martin Bidatondo, who has just come in straight from his own talk. It's going to be great. I hope you're excited. And I'm going to hand over to Martin. All right. So thank you. Um, thank you very much, uh, Nathan. And a big thank you to you for for running the show behind and on the scenes uh, through this UK Fungus Day. Uh, and again, also to Marina Hellman, who really helped out in uh, getting this event uh, organized and, and set up. So, so welcome all to this discussion um, on art, networks, and fungi. Um, I am Martin Vidartondo. I am a fungal biologist. I work at Imperial College and um, the Royal Botanic Gardens at Kew. And we have several uh, really nice people here from the creative sectors. Uh, they have all been involved with uh, fungi through their work in a variety of uh, rather pioneering ways. So that's what we are going to hear about. Um, and uh, we have people that have been organizing uh, recent uh, successful public events uh, like exhibits and, and festivals. Uh, and we also have artists and writers and some that do both. Um, and uh, they have all been participating in this uh, uh, new trend of sort of bringing fungi to more visible uh, places in the arts and in public consciousness uh, recently. Um, and this has a lot to do with science communication. So I'm very keen to, to learn more from them. Um, and I will let them uh, introduce their uh, work themselves. Um, but first I want to say that uh, interacting with people in the art sector, um, can be both sort of a, a really liberating for a scientist, but it can also be quite challenging. Um, you know, and as scientists, we are we are sort of trained, we are drilled with uh, being um, as objective as possible, so that our work is taken seriously. Um, and when we are talking with uh, with artists, then the the tables are sort of turned, and you know, it's it's okay to be uh, totally subjective. Uh, and to you know, let your emotions and your inspiration from these uh, organisms uh, come to light. Uh, and I think that's critical for artists because it, it allows them to have their work taken seriously, to show that they're really uh, into it. Um, so, so I'm looking forward to, to chatting with this uh, nice bunch of people uh, today and listen to what they have to say. Um, so what I'm gonna do next um, is remind you to keep uh, on mute uh, if you're not uh, speaking, and uh, hopefully I will remember to do that myself. And um, um, and I'm going to start um, by asking each of our panelists today to uh, maybe share some slides. I think some of them will, uh, and tell us a bit about some of their work for a, for a few minutes. Um, to kind of get everybody uh, properly introduced. So I wanted to start, if possible, with Chloe Ma Ting. Martin, and, yeah, sorry. Sorry, just very quickly, just yeah. to any members of the audience, maybe they might want to turn their cameras off, just um, because I can see on my screen, I've got a couple of members of the audience. Thank you. Thanks. Great. Sorry, Martin, to interrupt. Yeah, the, I mean, we want to help with the broadband here as well. So, uh, so yeah, fingers crossed. So that hopefully that helps too. So, so if if, uh, if Chloe Ting and Alexandra Sazonova could uh, start off, that would be great. So I'll I'll pass it over to you. Is that all right? 
Yeah, yes. of course. Thank you. We're just gonna share our screen. Yes. All right. Cool. Hi. <laughs> Hi, everyone. <laughs> so I'm Chloe. I'm Alex. And we're Photograms. Um, so we met each other in 2016 at Central St. Martin's while we were doing our MA in Cultural Criticism and Curation. Um, we founded Fertile Grounds to create art projects um, that tackled undervalued territories, usually pertaining to science and relationship to nature. And when we meet, when we say undervalued territories, what we mean are fields that are often overlooked in the mainstream, um, but we find um, interesting. And as a collective, uh, we like to weave connections between people, concepts, um, and movements um, to find photo grounds for new ideas and new perspectives. Um, we think that art and culture are um, central drivers in creating value shifts and behavior change in people, um, and it is just as powerful as scientific knowledge, um, and even more so when they are walking hand in hand. Um, and then in 2019, um, last year, was it today? I think it was, yeah, it was today, almost. 6th of October. Oh, okay. It so was 6th of October. In two, in two days. Um, in last year, we um, organized Fungi Fest. Um, uh, we had been interested in fungi for a while. Um, we were aware of the worldwide mycological scene. Um, and through a couple of years of research, we noticed that there were a lot of practitioners from different fields that were working with fungi, including chefs, designers, writers, um, artists, herbalists, chemists, doctors, foragers, practically every kind of industry um, and every different field had people that were interested in fungi and doing really interesting things with it. Um, and we felt that in the UK, um, it, it would, like the UK would really benefit in a cultural event um, that shone a light to, um, on fungi and to let it trickle down into the mainstream and awaken people's curiosity about fungi. So at the festival, we brought together a bunch of different experts um, from varying fields um, to discuss their relationship with fungi. Um, and during the festival, um, there were an array of activities um, for everyone to engage in. Um, and that uh, besides talks, uh, we also had workshops such as wild mushroom identification, um, making medicinal mushroom broth um, and fermentation. Uh, we had um, a couple of art installations that explored mushrooms and mycelial networks through sound, video, and performance. Uh, we had food vendors that served mushroom dishes from a wide range of cultures. Uh, we also invited a bunch of people to have market stalls um, that sold different mushroom-related products so people could continue their mycelium um, journey um, in their own time. And uh, now we are still planning on developing our work with fungi. Um, we're not done with fungi yet. Uh, we are uh, planning and hoping to create more art where people can um, feel into the world of fungi. Um, and as a collaborative duo, we really believe in working together and co-creating with different materials and also with different living beings um, and people and practitioners. I think as well, because we're two uh, female art practitioners, we tend to work with a loving, caring and nurturing perspective. And currently we are exploring concepts of cohabitation, questioning humankind within ecosystems and how to better care for and love the earth. So we usually draw from fields of natural sciences, anthropology and language studies um, to question our shared values, knowledge and existence. Our multi-strand project range in artistic formats, so we've done residencies, exhibitions, panel discussions, installations, and festivals. Um, one thing is that the scientific lens tends to separate the observer and the observed. It honors the chain of evidence and logic to discern one thing from another and rarely accepts emotional and spiritual knowing as part of understanding. So we feel that in reintroducing nature and fungi through cultural languages that incorporate a caring and nurturing narratives, people can empathize with nature differently and see our planet as a living land, independent of human influence, rather than just a provider of natural resources. Uh, both languages are needed. We want to acknowledge that nature performs acts of love daily. It nurtures our health and well-being, generously shares its resources and creates beauty all around us. We are interdependent and a healthy reciprocal relationship requires mutual respect and action. To focus only on one side of the relationship is to diminish it. 
So we feel that our job as Fertile Grounds is to ask how does nature love us and how do we learn to love it back? We've done um, other projects beyond Fungi Fest. If you're interested in finding out a bit more, we've got um, social media as Fertile Grounds and we'd love to hear from you. And we're always very eager to collaborate with people as we've said before. So yeah, that's all for us. Great. So thank you so much, um, Chloe and Alex. Um, so next I was going to ask uh, Berta Zubrikaiti to introduce herself. And uh, I think she's gonna show some slides as well. Is that all right? Of course, yes. Great. Hello. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. First of all, so thank you. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here today. Unfortunately, Francesca Gavin was unable to attend the talk due to personal reasons. Uh, but I've, I work as an exhibitions manager at Somerset House, uh, and I had a delightful opportunity to work with Francesca on mushroom, Mushrooms exhibition at Somerset House. So I'll share some slides. Let me, are you able to see well? Yes. Right. Perfect. So for those of you who might not be aware of Somerset House, we are a cultural center, an art center and an institution um, uh, with a number and the UK, actually a home of UK's uh, largest uh, largest cultural community with a number of residents from different disciplines occupying the building. So including um, theater, dance, um, technology, music, etc. Somerset House uh, also hosts Somerset House Studios. It's an experimental workplace uh, that basically provides a platform for uh, creatives and cross-disciplinary pr practitioners to collaborate and experiment. And importantly, we are also home of a project which you may have heard about, which is called Edible Utopia. Uh, the project is led by Darren Springer. And as a result of this project, we actually grow mushrooms at the coal holes um, at Somerset House, which are basically based under the courtyard that you see in this image. So this was a natural bridge that kind of connected us to the subject of mushrooms mushroom, but more so uh, through different conversations with artists and the research that we've been doing as well, you know, as Francesca's idea, we found out that artists are increasingly more interested in the subject of mushroom and especially this idea of a wood wide web and you know connectivity and collectivity that comes with it um, and we thought that mushroom as an emblem and as a symbol is such an easy access uh, for broader audiences that might not necessarily come from either arts or science to engage with much more serious issues um, you know environmental as well as um, Kind of pollution and how we deal with waste um, and even you know economics uh, much larger subjects um, than that so essentially this exhibition uh, presented work of more than 30 artists musicians and architects um, and positioned mushroom as a kind of a symbol uh, and a cultural culture kind of a cultural inspiration, how for, for us to think about ideas in regards to humanity, a construction of humanity, ourselves, um, nature, and even politics and economics. And the entire exhibition was actually told in three chapters. So th these were mycophilia, ma magic mushrooms, and fungi futures. Uh, and I'll speak a bit about each of them. So our opening, kind of the opening of the story was um, mycophilia. And in this, uh, in this section, we actually introduced mushroom as a concept. So what we were looking at, we were looking at the cultural prejudice that surrounded mushroom for centuries, especially in Western Europe, and about contemporary thinking and how it has changed since the 19th century. Uh, with the kind of adma advancement of the amateur botany, as well as mushroom appearance in uh, children's literature and books such as Alice in Wonderland. So those vitrines that you see in the middle, they, they, rep they, they have illustrations with different illustrations from different editions of Alice in Wonderland books. Um, we've also presented works by Beatrix Potter. Uh, she actually um, has done, had done a 
over 300 watercolors depicting mushroom. We had nine of them, but that was just kind of a, uh, an entry point, um, kind of, we wanted to really depict that moment when the shift is, has changed. So the works by, you know, the older works by Beatrix Potter or like illustrations were actually um, juxtaposed with the more contemporary works by people such as, Cy, uh, artists such as Cy, Cy Twombly or a Canadian a uh, artist, Alex Morrison. Um, so, and on to the next chapter from here, we came to magic mushrooms and magic mushrooms as a theme have looked at mushroom and altered states of consciousness um, and, and kind of the human imagination and how it depicted mushrooms through poetic and ritual. So the artists involved in this section were people including Shauna Gavin, who as you can see in the middle picture has depicted the mushrooms as these anthropomorphic figures. Karen Mirza, who is really interested in psilocybin and uh, other psychoactive plants and their uh, use in transcendental rituals or people such as uh, Lawrence Oven, who actually in abstract way depicts a mushroom and mushroom spore growth. So these were the work on your right hand side is actually a, a ceramic wall sculpture. Uh, so different approaches by, by different artists um, in the second section. And the last room and the last kind of the closing chapter was us thinking about the future of a fungi and what it has to offer. Uh, and we looked for, at the different materials, we looked at the architecture and, and how we as humans can actually use fungi to um, think about environment, about the way that we um, deal with waste and pollution. So the centerpiece of this room was uh, Jai, Kore American Korean artist Jairam Lee burial suit. So what Jairam Lee is doing at the moment, she's kind of rethinking our relationship with death. So this suit is made of a uh, biomaterial mushroom. And as, as it's being used, what it does is essentially it, um, it uh, reverses toxins into nutrients. So, so it essentially makes a uh, decomposing body more environmentally friendly uh, in, in the earth. Um, we've also shown um, architectural samples. So the bricks that you can see on the right-hand side, these are by Maya Ling Loco. Um, and yeah, these are just um, mycelium bricks. We've also looked at different um, textiles. So in the vitrine on your left-hand side, um, there were some samples by Dutch designer Aniela Hoyting uh, and her experiments with mycelium and, and, um, and clothing. Um, so yes, so this was the exhibition at Somerset House. Uh, and if you have more questions, please let me know after. That's it. Great. Thank you so much, Berta. Um, so our next, I would like to ask Abby Palmer to tell us about herself and her work. Okay, hello. I also have a slideshow, so i um, just gonna set you up uh, from the beginning. Can you see that? Not yet. Uh, uh, oh yeah, I need to share the screen, sorry. <laughs> um, uh, let me, sorry for the technical hitch. Uh, share screen. PowerPoint share. Sorry for that slight delay. I was no fully was about to start it's with there. You. Great. Yeah. Okay. Start from beginning. Okay. So I'm Abby. I'm I'm an art. I'm an interactive artist. I do a lot of installation work, and I also work with text. Today, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, the the background of um, like a, my work. Uh, I worked a lot with Nathan Smith, um, who is uh, running this event, um, and I'm going to sort of do a brief summary of of kind of what it was like in the mushroom scene, mushroom art scene back all the way back in 2016 and kind of where that's taken us since is a very very small glimpse but um, as you can see from the other two talks that things are literally mushrooming all over the place so um, I'm going to talk uh, firstly about Myco Lyrica, um, a, a project that Nathan and I did in 2016. It was a collaboration between my, 
Nathan Smith as a mycologist and myself um, as an artist so, and a writer. The idea was to develop literary and poetic forms that mirrored the reproductive and lifestyle choices of various forms of fungi. So we held a workshop at Kew Gardens Fungarium in the summer of 2016 called Exploring the Fungarium, Poetry, Form and Fungus. Um, we each took on responsibility for a different form. Lee Davies from the Fungarium gave our participants an excellent talk and invited us to explore the space, as you can see here. Um, Nathan gave us a Mycology 101 session where he talked about the incredibly varied reproductive patterns of various fungi. In his words, fungi have freakier sex than you. Um, and that really stayed with me, as I'm sure we'll talk about as we go on. Uh, one of Nathan's suggestions was an asexually reproducing haiku. I'm just going to show you like short clips of this, but I'm going to put them on Twitter later. Um, this is a poem where it, it's the same poem which changes one word at a time to form a wider narrative. Um, I'm going to you, you'll see the words kind of change one by one here, um, but it's really worth looking at online. I think it's a brilliant piece of work. Um, for me, uh, not having a background in mycology, um, it was a huge learning curve, but one of my uh, areas is in uh, experimental forms of literature and constraint. Um, so I spent a lot of time thinking about the so-called wood wide web that's already kind of been discussed a little bit, um, mycorrhizal networks, um, uh, and developing that in mycorrhizal networks that develop that connect individual plants into a network of exchange. Um, I developed a form for a concrete poem. A concrete poem is kind of a visual poem. It looks it looks how it um, it looks like what it is. Um, and uh, this is a symbi It was a very quick example of a symbiotic concrete poem. So each um, thread of language. Uh, spring up around a small central thread of what I'm calling root words. Um, it can be read across or it can be read vertically or depending on how we use the exchanging words in the center. Um, so uh, for me that was an attempt to kind of mirror what the what the mycorrhizal networks are doing. Um, in the workshop uh, the exploring the fungarium we took this even further so the participants all took small mycorrhizal root words and um, inserted and intermingled their own linguistic thread. The form could grow and spread infinitely in all directions and be read in all directions so that's a symbiotic symbiotic concrete problem. Um, my dream is to one day grow this into a three-dimensional sculpture that just keeps on going and going and going. Um, we also experimented with parasitic forms of fungi. So this one is a parasitic concrete poem. Um, uh, it's uh, is by Stuart Carswell, one of our participants. Um, uh, one poem is rewritten over another one, so it destroys the first poem, um, but it also depends on the first poem in order to survive. Um, so it, it's a symbiotic, parasitic, uh, concrete poem. Um, there, there it, it's, uh, I, I'll put these on Twitter so you can read them properly. I'm sorry for the lack of time. Um, and Mike West did a parasitic overlay. Oh, I've gone ahead too far. Um, which is on. It, it's basically. It's a cut up where a classic Robert Frost poem about trees has been completely blown apart, but is also held together by a glossary of fungi. Um, so, uh, so it we're just exploring different ways in which language and fungus can interact with each other. Um, that was 2016 and I haven't stopped thinking about the relationship between fungus and form ever since. Um, my book Sanatorium, uh, published by Pen in the Margins, came out in uh, 2020. It navigates two spaces, um, a luxury thermal spa and an 80 pound inflatable bathtub. Um, it's a book that explores the idea of wetness, um, particularly with regards to my own queer disabled bo body. Um, fungus seeps into the book and my body intertwining and taking over. It serves as a very real foe that my body spends a lot of time battling with. Um, and also as a metaphor for the horror of my f physical decline. Um, it, as I say here, I hope that, oh, I've gone too far. Uh, go back. 
um, as you, I hope that you fail to notice me now, surrounded by filth and fungus. As my cartilage melts into water, I see the liquid around me thickening into gloop and growing fibrous hairs. White blue fur sits damp on my tongue and heavy on my cheekbones, my fat knees. My bathtub is full to the brim of spores. I watch them grow, flattening out from papery threads into thick and coiling mushrooms, so dense and spongy I can barely move. Mushrooms springing out my arms, springing out my necks, mushrooms between my legs, fat white mushrooms, thick and spongy. My toes are mushrooms, a moist old gray one crumbles into mush. Um, so the word mushrooms gets bandied about there. Um, uh, fungi also appears in the book as a structural device. The book is non-linear and fragmented, formed of intertwining threads, silent sleepy gaps, and sudden bursts of energetic and surprising shapes. Um, for me, that feels an awful lot like being in a chronically ill body. Um, so this, this idea, which started with Nathan's very flippant statement, fungi have freakier sex than you, is expanding all the time. Um, I would argue that, uh, it, that slime molds and fungi are inherently crip and queer forms. They're often dismissed, they're from underfunded departments and are often treated with disgust. But when you look closer, this model of exchange we see, um, for instance, in the mycorrhizal networks or the way certain slime cells signal to each other and self-sacrifice in times of need are reminiscent of marginalized communities um, who often organize through complex mutual aid networks and signal to each other in innovative and unconventional ways. In a year that's been very lacking in hope for these communities, my goal is to invite more artists from marginalized spaces to look to slime molds and fungi as a source of material to imagine a way forward. Um, I ask questions like, how can we as a community become more like slime mold? How can we signal to and support each other? How can we merge without losing ourselves? And even what can we learn from observing parasitic forms of fungi and how they interact with their surroundings in a way that might help us find ways to protect ourselves? Um, there's a joy in the fact that so many species of mushroom lie dormant for most of the year and then suddenly spring up fantastic and strange and full of life. What can the chronically ill community use um, from this model to come closer to self-acceptance for our many fluctuations and our need to rest? Um, when we began Mycolyrica in 2016, there was a very small amount of interest in the poetry or from the poetry or the art community and the idea of hormone fungus. Um, although I did get a lot of emails from people throughout Europe um, and America, um, but now there's this ever-growing consortium of mushroom poets and artists, as we can see here. Um, we're currently in touch with slimers and microfiles all over the world. It feels like we're signaling to each other um, and these strange new creatures and connections are beginning to grow. Um, so like everyone else, I'm really happy to keep chatting about this. Um, my information is here and you can find me on Twitter and I will try to put a thread up of all of those poems in a minute. Um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. I hope that made sense. Great. Thank you so much, Abby. Um, and our next uh, artist to introduce herself is Mariana Hellman. So over to you. Thank you. I'm just going to turn the camera off if that's all right, and then come to share screen. Yeah. Can you see my screen? Yeah. Yes. And now? Good. Okay, great. Okay. So, hi everyone. It's really great to be here and to share my work with you. I'm going to concentrate on running with mycelium only today, um, from which this and yesterday's talk mushroomed. The name running with mycelium is a nod to Paul Stamets' influential book, Mycelium Running, but it also refers to the saying, if you run with wolves, you learn to howl. First, I'll take you through how I arrived to fungi, and then I'll talk about the project. 
During 2005, I explored chaos and order by unleashing uncontrolled repetitive movements onto a series of about 100 drawings. The process became my epiphany and triggered my curiosity about scale, interconnectivity, and networks. As a result of this, learning about science, the science that underpins life became central to my practice. This piece uh, called Systems Within Systems was conceived as a way to map mental journeys through the web of interconnected factors that make up all aspects of life. I was uh, commissioned to develop this concept further by the Medical Research Council for their project, A Picture of Health. Uh, in collaboration with Dr. Enrique Castro Sanchez, we use this system to explore the topic of micro, uh, antimicrobial resistance. I'm interested in the way that things can be minuscule and yet massive at the same time, or massive and yet minuscule. In this series, I explore human scale and imagine it through a different lens. Here, I'm thinking about the fragility and insignificance of human life in the spectrum of the Earth's history. These images show a small part of my ongoing interest in the way that life and death are both part of the same thing. There is no beginning and no end, only an endless cycling of matter and energy. Learning about the many factors at play in this cycle was the beginning of my interest in decomposition and subsequently in fungi. Invisible symbionts marks the beginning of my journey with fungi. I was captivated by the symbiotic associations between mycorrhizal fungi and trees, which encapsulate my core interests in scale and interconnectivity. This was the portal that plunged me into fungi's vast and complex kingdom. So on to running with mycelium. Um, this project was conceived to be a dynamic space where the observation of living mycelium would go hand in hand with artistic and academic exploration of the fungal kingdom. This was and is a personal journey of learning, but it's also a platform for exchange, connection, dialogue and collaboration. This is a view of the installation during its initial phases. On the right is a test for one of the growth boxes, which will be called zones of interaction. The concept behind uh, zones of interaction is related to a collaborative project between fungal ecologist Professor Lynn Boddy, uh, bioelectrical musician Michael Prime and myself called the sounds of interaction. And if any of you were at the talk yesterday, you got to hear the beginning of our collaboration. Um, uh, I've used drawing as a way to zoom into the morphology of fungi, as well as a way to explore and distill ideas. So this is the first growth box I've initiated so far. It's called Carbon Souls 2. Um, Inside there is barley straw and these tiny plastic figurines with blackened souls, which are being colonized and will eventually be consumed by the mycelium. By the way, just a note uh, to say that the barley straw, actually Darren Springer from Somerset House helped me to uh, pasteurize and inoculate the barley straw inside this box. So huge thanks to him for that tutorial that he gave me. Uh, on the right is a magnificent cluster of Pleurotus ostreatus mushrooms, which grew out of one of the tiny breathing holes in the surface of the boxes. This is a detail of the mycelium and of the, of the mushroom. Um, so for my degree in art and science at Central St. Martins, I, did, I dedicated my research paper to understanding what was going on in the world of fungi. And as a result, I got to know about this incredible field of art and fungi, art, design, architecture, music, performance, etc., that is, you know, bubbling under the surface across the world. 
and um, I became fascinated by why was this happening. So I'm I'm going to read out the title of my my um, my research: Invisible Networks. It has been said that mushrooms can help save the world. What is it about mushrooms that it is is in Inspiring this type of confidence amongst a growing group of ecologically driven creatives and in what way is the work of designers and artists like Mauricio Montalti and Sp Sasa Spachal contributing to this optimism. Um, this research was, I mean, it was very difficult to narrow it down to just two artists, but the reason why I chose these two is because they, one of them is dealing with mycomaterials, which is Mau Mauricio Montalti. And the other one is engaging with, is using technology to engage with fungi on a very visceral level. She's actually making connections to fungi and, and I found that very interesting. So it was interesting to look at the very different approaches and very different reasons behind this growing interest in fungi. And the fact that, you know, over all this, there is this idea that fungi have so much hope that they can save our world, that they can, you know, uh, give us so many solutions to so many of the problems that we've um, that we've uh, created. So I think that you know we it was quite easy to find information about all this that was going on in, for example, countries like Holland or Germany or the U.S. But it was much more difficult to tap into what was going on here in England. I'm not saying that there aren't or weren't things going on here, but it was difficult to tap into them. So I really do believe that we do need to um, catch up and uh, you know, generate more hubs, more platforms where dialogues and collaborations can flourish to give us a multi-dimensional understanding of fungi. Obviously, I, I do want to say a huge thank you to um, Fertile Grounds, Alex and Chloe, because I think that their Fungi Fest was really marks the beginning of a kind of explosion in the past year here in England. And, um, and it was for me personally, a huge contribution to my research and, and subsequent work that has come out of that. Um, also the mushrooms exhibition was a really fantastic promoter of fungi. So yesterday and today's talk is a, an excellent example of how events like Fertile Ground can trigger and extend the networks and dialogues and collaboration between mycology and art. Lynn and I, Lynn, who I had already been aware of and was already a, an admirer of her work, we got the opportunity to meet at Fungi Fest last year. And since then we've started uh, the Sounds of Interaction Collaboration. I've helped her design the cover of her soon to be published book. And actually it was through Lynn that the BMS contacted me to co-organize these two talks with Nathan Smith. So, you know, uh, happy Fungus Day and let's keep doing events like this. That's um, all for now, I think. Thank you very <laughs> much, Marina. That's, that's very inspiring. Thank you. Um, I, I guess listening to, to all of you talking, um, the first question that came to my mind, and I actually, I, I would like to see if, if I can get you all to answer this in some way or another, is um, in, in what way did the public uh, and or your peers, and you know whoever you consider your peers in, in, your, in your field, uh, respond to your work on fungi? Um, and because you all seem to still be quite hooked on fungi. Uh, I was happy to hear many of you say, well, for my next fungi project, I'm planning to do this or that. Um, what did you take away from what you've done already for your next uh, you know, event or activity or, or, or work that you are, that you are cooking up? Um, so I, 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 let's, let's start with, uh, with Chloe and, and, and Alex. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, tell, tell us a bit more about that. Um, so I think for Fungi Fest, first of all, um, a lot of the contributors came up to us and said that they were really excited at the amount of like young fresh faces in the audience because it was like quite, yeah, quite a young audience that came and apparently that was something that differed from like the usual 
um, mycological gatherings. Um, and I think for us, it was like a great opportunity to learn from people who had been in the field much longer than we had because we, we wanted to actually originally create an artwork, but we needed to research and we felt like we didn't have enough information to speak on behalf of like the mycological kind of people and like societies. And we wanted to see how the scene was in Britain before speaking about it here. So it was really, really valuable for us. And in terms of like other response, other than people were kind of like happy that there was like a younger audience getting interested. Maybe you have, I don't know. Yeah, I think, yeah, just to echo um, what Alex was saying, I think we, we were pretty shocked to kind of learn when we were doing um, Fungi Fest that there wasn't a lot of mycologists in the UK. There was what, 15 mycologists, mm -hmm. if I remember correctly. And also um, at that time, um, uh, the kind of the field in science, there wasn't a lot of, um, there wasn't a lot of students that were really enthusiastic about it. But I think because of, um, because of the growing interest of um, mushrooms in culture, um, hopefully they will kind of breed a new kind of group of people who will kind of turn to understand that mycology actually holds a lot of information and a lot of knowledge to be explored. Um, and I think another thing that um, we've noticed is that um, like ideas don't really like it's not really born out of just one person it's always born out of um, and emerges out of a form of um, collectivity and so you always need people um, working within an ecosystem kind of like how natural ecosystems work you have to have people working in varying different fields um, that are interconnected and at different levels working with each other in order for it to become an idea in order for it to actually become kind of a consensus that people accept within culture um, and for us that's also why we think being cultural producers and making events is a form of art and a form of um, and a form of uh, bringing things to life and bringing things um, to people's attention because um, in a way as well like you know attention is kind of a currency now we've got so many distractions everyone's trying to fight for your attention we want to kind of make sure that we have we, we're providing opportunities for people to kind of draw their attention to places that might not necessarily be highlighted or be asset, assessed accessed mm -hmm. very easily and so um yeah and so that's why we we thought fungi fest was really important and on that note, I, I remember one challenge that we did get when we were um, organizing Fungi Fest was there were people saying, why are you organizing it in, in London? London. Um, yeah. Why, you know, why not in, in you know, further Somerset out, in, yeah, yeah. Somerset or in Devon or in places where, you know, people are more understanding of fungi. Um, and I think we took that as a challenge and we thought that was exactly the reason why we needed to do it in London, because it's not about, you know, preaching to the choir. It's about um, getting people that might not have that opportunity mm -hmm. as easily to access this information and to understand it and to draw those people into the conversation. Yeah, I, I concur completely with that. Yeah, one of the things that I thought was most interesting was the idea of having a fungus event in, in, in East London. I thought that was, you know, really, really a cool idea. Uh, and there's a lot of preaching to the converted going on. Um, so I think uh, breaking out to new audiences is absolutely critical. Um, thank you very much. Uh, so basically the same question for, for Berta. Um, how how did the the public? I'm, I'm sure Somerset House has some way of, of assessing public response in a formal way. Uh, but you know, what what is your take on on how the public responded? But also maybe other people that are in you know in the in the art sector that are you know sort of dealing with this more professionally. Um, and, and what did you take away for for future events that you might be involved with, perhaps with fungi? Yes, sure. Um, so yes, you're right. We have public service that we actually carry on, um, carry out. Uh, so in general, people's reception was extremely positive and not only audience, but also the press um, and the wider sector. Um, just yeah, recognize it as a very important subject to kind of uh, cover and from both, I guess, the conceptual kind of way, um, as well as um, yeah. 
from so I think from the conceptual kind of way, I think it was a big surprise to a lot of people from what they've been saying. Many people did not recognize that actually mushrooms have such an important a role and that they play such an important role in our ecosystems, but also all the experiments that are happening now in design and especially material, um, um, kind of material culture. So I think in terms of the art world, there is a lot to learn um, and rethink even our position um, in, and how we kind of, as an art world, think about the uh, pollution and waste management and this is what mushrooms in the especially in the fungi future section really presented a few you know solutions how to, how to address that um, for me personally and I think for institutions in general it was a huge learning curve in terms of how just a simple practical way of how to even display something related to mushrooms and think about uh, spores and the conservation that is involved in, in exhibiting works, you know, classics such as Sai Twombly across somebody like my Ling Local and have mycelium mushroom bricks that I just exposed there. Um, and I, I think it was just a very timely, timely, um, it was timely event and especially because uh, Fungi Fest was going on at the just prior the exhibition opened uh, so i feel like it overlapped quite well and the entire public program actually around the exhibition was also geared towards teaching people about different aspects of a mushroom so for instance uh, dr whale he introduced this even like beauty range you know and how to kind of use mushroom and wellness which is so popular now and, and we speak about it and medicine as well which maybe wasn't touched that much in the exhibition itself but developed through the public but um most interesting for me personally was how our designers also responded to mushroom so if you think about design the entire typography of the exhibition was inspired by the mushroom spore growth so we've developed a generative typeface that was then 3d printed so like abby mentioned that she wanted to do a 3d sculpture out of her project and and kind of resonated to how we created a special, essentially a tool where you could, uh, you know, type in a word um, and it just kind of sporadically grows on your screen. And what we've done, uh, we've uh, just 3D printed the entire title of the exhibition. So, you know, just the experimentation and, and kind of like how Mushroom can ignite people's imagination and really capture, that was very impressive to see and, and a very big positive. Yeah, so in general, extremely positive. And I think we'll do more exhibitions uh, in, in relation to the natural world in general. So the new concept that is bubbling up is this idea about um, plant uh, blindness, you know, and how we kind of go through the world not noticing them. Uh, so yeah, so we'll see. Great, that's, that's lovely. Yeah, I think a lot of organisms need more PR, that's, that's for sure. Um, so I guess um, I want to ask the, again, the same question to, to Abby Palmer. Um, so, so you know, I guess as a as a writer, it might be perhaps different how how you get feedback from from the audience. Uh, but I would still want to hear, you know, how how it is that that the public or or other writers have responded to your to your work. In uh, I mean, it, it sounds like you've got several fungi related works in the works. Um, but yeah, tell tell us a bit more about that. Yeah, well, it's been actually easier um, as my practice has moved more into kind of installation work uh, outside of the, the fungi world. It's been easier to find um, people who are receptive to the idea of of fung fungus. Like well, one thing that's been happening a lot that's really bizarre is when I'm talking to other kind of installation artists, film artists, um, and we, uh, about. Fung fungi and, and slime molds, um, we're noticing all of these small connections where we're all working on very similar ideas at the same time, but it doesn't feel like a competition. It feels like a like it's meant to be like we're literally emulating slime, um, slime and, 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 and symbiotic fung fungal networks. And that's something that is very new for me to, to have seen Fungi Fest and seen the mushrooms exhibit at Somerset House um, 
and compare that to how it was uh, when Nathan and I started this idea in 2016, the, the receptivity in the poetry world at that time was really limited. People didn't really know what, what to do with it. And it was, um, I noticed that over the last few years, like more texts that were involving fungus and, and, and subjects that I'm interested in, like uh, Yeni Hval's Paradise Rot was just translated, uh, I think two years ago into English um, from Norwegian. And that's a, a book about kind of queer relationships and fungus um, and and for me that was this revolutionary moment of saying like okay people are ready to start thinking about this again it was really transformative um, and um, and I think from like even when we tried to explain the the what the what the workshop we were trying to do to the fungarium um, or to Kew Gardens um, the fungarium were very receptive but Kew Gardens were kind of a bit Bewild, bewildered by it and now I'm kind of over the pandemic I've been looking on Twitter and there's this new hashtag mushroom poets and micro poets and people are starting to write about m mushrooms anyway um, and it seems like uh, it it's just been really nice to kind of tap into that. And, and as Mariana said, like uh, the, the UK seems just to be a little bit behind. Um, it, it, when, when in, in 2016, when we started, um, I was getting emails that people were sending me their journals from this very small event. People were sending me journals and, and writings from all over the world. But, but in the UK, there was this sort of kind of bewilderment about it. Um, and it wasn't seen as avant-garde, it wasn't seen as experimental um the idea of 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 poet the, the the difference between poetry and art of, about mushrooms rather than poetry and art of mushrooms or, or of fungus of of um of of how it grows and uh, that works with it and intersects with it what is very different now to how it was then so yeah i think it will keep um growing definitely people are much more receptive now do you think that this particular significance for sort of disabled, excluded, discriminated communities? Um, I mean, I you know it, it doesn't it probably doesn't escape that you know here we have a panel where there's a lot of females. Um, mm -hmm. You know, if, if if I'm trying to set up a panel and to to discuss science, it is quite difficult to do this. Um, yeah. and here it just happens. It's sort of a natural thing. So. So is that is that the case as well? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, one thing that was really interesting about running a workshop about mushrooms was people were a lot of um, able-bodied people were very repulsed by it. And now with it, like I, there's a huge uh, disabled and queer community on Instagram, um, and um, those people tend to be drawn to like we're used to dis disgust, we're used to otherness, and I think there's something about the way fungal networks grow that enables you to. To sort of look at that otherness and and embrace it and and actually and then see the wonderment say, say like even you could get into as as um as uh, fungal futures talk, talked about the the idea of um uh climate change the idea of having answers to problems that can't be fixed with with this current model i think um people who are are the anyway are more willing to embrace um uh forms that have been traditionally treated with kind of either disgust or dismissal um mushrooms are are um, 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 marginalized if mycology is a marginalized and underfunded department of research <laughs> right yeah we we have to overcome mycophobia uh, yeah in the interest of time um we all knew we were gonna run out of time uh and i guess that's a message that we probably we should have many more events like this um we we really should be moving on to our the next event uh mariana is the is there something that you're desperate to to pitch in here uh, or, or would it be okay to, to close here? I, I, you, you've co-organized this. So you, okay, you so how about we make a deal? It's we a, we, get, we, together. Sort of uh, we get together again next year or for another event because my event hasn't yet, actually I've been underground all these months okay. and this has just surfaced. This is the first bloom 
So maybe we can discuss the, the results and the things that came out of this talk, yesterday's talk, and everything that we are going to do and have been doing lately. So let's make an appointment for a future event. Lovely. How about that? Is that a good way to end? <laughs> yes. Thank you very much. So thank you all. Um, and enjoy the, the rest of uh, UK Fungus Day. Lovely Thank to talk you so to you. much. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank Happy you so UK much. Fungus Day. Happy Bye. UK. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye.